in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and six verse, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, I'm reading the NIV. He says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he's decided in his heart to give. Everybody say, in his heart. In his heart. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So it's not just the amount of you sowing, it's the heart of the sower. Right? Yes. The, the condition of the heart, the heart of the sower, the giver, determines with God the acceptability of the gift. If the heart's not right, the gift's not acceptable with Him. But it's, it's the heart that makes the gift acceptable. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've, I've traveled to other places and, and other countries and been in different situations. And there have been times that people gave me things that didn't have maybe much of a monetary value. But I knew it had a value to them. Yes, and because of its value to them, I believe that makes it valuable to him. Yes. Right? Yes, and therefore it's valuable to me. Very important. But on the other hand, if it means nothing to you, <laughs> if it has little or no value to you, then that, that makes it that kind of gift. It's not a very valuable gift. <laughs> anyway, he's talking about the heart. And he says in verse 8, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say abound. 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 The 11th verse says, you'll be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. Don't you like that? Yes. Rich in every way, generous on every occasion. You ought to say that out loud a couple of times. Rich, Rich in every way, generous on every occasion. Is that the will of God for all His people? Now you got to make, even if you haven't been experiencing uh, this or this fully, you got to make up your mind that you believe this word. And instead of trying to explain it away or water down the word to match your lack of experience, believe God to elevate your experience to match this word. Because it's the word that's right. It's the word that's true. Let me read another translation or two of that. Um, let me see, I got it here. The, the Weiss translation says it like this. It says, God is powerful, this is verse 8, God is powerful to make every grace superabound to you in order that having always and all sufficiency in all things, you may superabound to every good work. God superabounded toward you and that puts you, that gives you ability to superabound toward others. God, God superabounded in grace toward you. What does, that, what does that mean? And the result is what? I, I now then, as a result of Him having superabounded toward me in grace, I now am able to superabound in blessing and helping others. Right? Thank you, Lord. We've been on a, a topic here for some weeks now called abounding ability. Abounding ability. And we're nearing the, the end of this study, not the end of doing it and living in it. We just, we, we're in the beginnings of coming to a whole other level of that. 
And you know, the Lord wouldn't talk to us about things if it was irrelevant. But it, why would he be talking to us about abounding ability? This is very pertinent light to where we are in his plan right now. You and I are going to uh, have to believe this and come up to it to do everything he's called us to do and be. Right? You know, sometimes people say, well, no, I don't believe in all that, that prosperity, health and wealth gospel. No, just hold on, hold on. What kind of gospel you believe in? <laughs> Poor and sick gospel. <laughs> really? Gospel means good news. Yes. Poor and sick's not good news. Good news. It's God's will for you to be broke and sick. Huh? Is that good news? It's not good news. It's not good news. It's not the good news. The good news is he bore our sicknesses. He carried our pains. He became poor for us so that we might be made rich. Folks can mock and scoff if they want to. I didn't write that. Other preachers didn't write that. It's been around a long, long time. Amen. God's never changed. He was a good God. He is a good God. He'll always be a good God. He's a healing God. He's a providing God. He's a protecting God. He's a good, great, big, rich, abundant, abounding God. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. We make no apologies for believing that, do we? Certainly not. What does that word abound mean? We see it, uh, just, just hold your place right here and, and put up John 10.10 10 in the Amplified. You don't have to turn there. You can, just, you can stay in 2 Corinthians. John 10.10 10 in the Amplified, this, this word is in here where Jesus said the thief comes uh, only to steal and kill and destroy Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. Some of the same words are translated abounding or translated abundant, abundance. And it says here in the Amplified, to the full until it overflows. And that word, that is a good definition of that word. Let me read it to you again. These words translated abundance, abundant, abound, abounding. They literally mean, or carry the idea of the, of the sense of beyond. Beyond what? To, to superabound in quantity or quality. To be in excess. Everybody say excess. It literally means enough and more. <laughs> what is what is? Uh, Abounding, what is this word translated? Abundance. It doesn't just mean enough. It means enough plus. Which is another word that's used, surplus. Or surplus edge. And instead of abundant or abounding, that's why Weist uses the word super abound. Because abounding wouldn't be enough to describe the word. How many like the word super abound? Surplus, surplus edge. Can you say, I believe it? What do you believe? You believe God's a God of surplus, a God of beyond, more than enough? Well, let me, let me continue reading in this same uh, passage right here where he talks about, um, Weist said, this grace superabounds toward you so that you can have all sufficiency and you can superabound to every good work. The Weymouth says that you may have ample means for all good works. The NET says, the New English says, God is able to make all grace overflow to you. Well, that, that's, is, is, isn't that in line with what we've been talking about? If it was enough, that wouldn't be overflow. It was the flow up to and over. Right? God's able to make all grace overflow to you so that because you have enough of everything in every way at all times, you will overflow in every good work. Amen. Said out loud, He's overflowing to me. He's overflowing to me. And with that, and with that 
with that abounding ability, I can overflow to others. Is that the will of God? Is that the plan of God? It most definitely is. You hear people say, well, I, I don't believe in all that. You know, we were talking about health and wealth, gospel, all that prosperity stuff. If I got enough for me and mine, that's all I need. If we got enough to eat and a place to sleep, clothes to wear, that's all we care about. Well, what about everybody else? <laughs> what, you're, what they're saying is, all I care about is me and mine. That's all I care about. And uh, I want to, to share with you a word that uh, <coughs> Brother Kenneth Copeland spoke back during our Greater Faith Conference in February. Uh, they were there with us uh, in Sarasota. And uh, I, you know, it's been my custom for years now to stand up and say, um, at the offering time, we're getting our buildings and our lands and our houses and our vehicles. And a lot of times you've heard me say too, that this is not just about us stockpiling stuff. This is about us having everything. Have you ever heard me say, this is kingdom related. This is kingdom connect. Well, I, I knew that in my heart and we'd been saying that for some time, but, but uh, when I said it that time, Brother, Brother Copeland shouted. It went off in him. <laughs> and uh, I came back and sat down beside him and his eyes were big. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> he said, I saw it. I saw it. I saw, he said, uh, and, and let me read to you what the Spirit of God said to him a part of this, and then this is uh, something that the Lord's been ministering to us throughout this whole series. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. One of the things he said that the Spirit of God said to him was a quote from Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33, put it up on the screen for us. It said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and what would happen? All these things shall be added unto you. And he said the Spirit of God spoke to him, All these things in the kingdom must be brought into the kingdom by the faith of those who sow and reap beyond themselves. Did you hear that? Those who sow and reap beyond themselves. Say it out loud. Those who sow and reap beyond themselves. See, you, you got all kind of Christians. They're still struggling with the concept if God will help them pay their bills, their utilities, if God even cares about such things. Well, they're certainly not believing for anything beyond themselves to advance the kingdom or to help others. There's got to be a group of wide-eyed, excited folks like you and me. There's got to be a bunch like us that's not struggling with God providing for you and meeting your needs. This, this not struggling with him being a good God, but that'll go on and believe he's an abounding, super abounding, surplus, excess God. And us grow to where we're not just struggling to believe to pay our rent. Come on now, our, our electric bill or our car payment but that we are actually believing beyond our needs. Can you say glory to God? We're believing beyond our needs and desires. He said those who sow and reap beyond themselves. Glory to God. Having all sufficiency in all things and abounding to every good work. He said when I said we're getting our houses. 
He said, I saw subdivisions. <laughs> I saw people that had enough faith to just build them. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. But this has to do with people that will believe beyond themselves, that are no longer struggling and fighting about the so-called prosperity idea. God's always been a good God. We see this principle, big brother, little brother. You know what I mean by that or not? Not yet, huh? Hang on. Those that will sow and reap beyond themselves. We see, in fact, just uh, turn there with me right now to Joshua, Joshua 19. Did you know God has always been a God who will overflow you, Amen. who will run your cup over? Yes. Hasn't he? he? He never changes. Anybody remember the 23rd Psalm? Yes. It's amazing. Some of the very people that will fight so-called prosperity and abundance teaching, oh, they'll shed tears over how precious the 23rd Psalm is. Huh? Oh, and just despise a fellow like me. But they get misty-eyed when they talk about, oh, the 23rd song. So beautiful. Have you ever listened to it? <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I often run short. Huh? No. No. What does it say? What does that mean, I shall not want? I shall not want, what does that mean? Huh? Keep reading, verse 2, verse 2, keep reading. He makes me to lie down in desert, bare places. Because you learn a lot of things in those hard, dry, no, no, green pastures. And the reason a little sheep's laying down is because his belly's so full. Grass is waving over his head. He leads me beside. Still waters. Keep going. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Keep going. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because no you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Keep going. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Sometimes there's nothing on the table. But we just have to bear our cross. Huh? What? No. No. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Runs over. Runs over. That's abounding. That's super abundant. That's excess. Isn't it excess when it runs over the top, runs on the table, runs off in the floor? That was too much for the cup. And wouldn't God know when the last drop was in the cup with that spilling any? Wouldn't he know? Wouldn't he know? Well, why wouldn't he stop when it was full and not waste a drop? Because he's so big, he's got so much ability, spilling some is not a problem to him. It just doesn't bother him. You're thinking, God, God, it's a running over on the table. He goes, yeah, ain't it great? Isn't it great? It's great. Lord, it's a running on the floor. It's running out the door. He says, it's wonderful, isn't it? How many think we ought to get converted and think like him and agree with him? If he says running over is good, then running over is good. And if I never have but just enough for myself, then I don't have any for anybody else. I have to be running over. I have to be more than what I need. More than what I desire. Hmm? In order to be able to abound toward others. Can you say amen? amen. We see that Abraham had too many cows. Didn't he? They had so many cows, Genesis says, they couldn't live together. Uh, 
We see that Jacob and Esau had so many cows and goats. Same thing in Genesis 36. They, they couldn't dwell together because of their cows. Wouldn't God know? You reckon God knows how many uh, cows an acre can handle in that part of the country? Why would, and, and you, you don't want to wonder about it. The Bible says God gave them all those cows. It's right there in the scriptures. You mean God gave them too many cows for the land? <laughs> Some folks are scratching their head. <laughs> you know, uh, there were times when the Lord would tell them to cast their net, and they caught so many fish until the nets break, and they called their friends to come, and the ships begin to sink. Wouldn't the Lord know that it was too many fish for the nets and for the boats? But he just kept giving them fish. Just more fish, more fish. I believe I can see him laughing. <laughs> He's going, God, God, we're going to sink out here. These are too many fish. He goes, ha, huh? it's not my problem. Your boat's too little. <laughs> here, have some more fish. Have some more fish. Come on. Fish for everybody. <laughs> Something needs to go off inside us, right? in being taking after our Father and believing that there is no shortage in our source. There is no shortage in our supply. The devil will try to convince you. Uh, you know, confused people will try to convince you. Oh, we're running out, we're running out. We're running out of everything. We're going to run out of this. We're going to run out of that. Don't you believe it? Don't you believe it? The source the source of our soul, the source of our creation of the planet is well able to overflow every one of us and still have immense resources. I believe everybody on the planet could make a demand for everything they ever wanted and needed in full faith and the power of God manifest for the billions all at the same time and the lights in heaven wouldn't even flicker. <laughs> Do you believe that? You believe he's that big? Yes. Is he that good? Yes. Say it out loud. He's that big? He's that big. And he is that, good. he is that good. Glory to God. Glory to God. He told him in Leviticus 26, you know, he said, if you'll obey me and keep my commandments in Leviticus 26.10, the NIV says, you'll still be eating last year's harvest when you have to move it out to make room for the new. <laughs> that means you have too much. You got too much coming in for your storage capacity. Hmm? Reckon you still that way? Malachi talks about this. If you'll be a tither and you'll put God first, didn't he say he'd open up the windows of heaven, yes. pour out blessings on you yes. till there wasn't room enough? Yes. Well, that's overflow. I said, that's overflow. Yes. Proverbs 3, 10 echoes that. It says, if you'll uh, honor the Lord with your substance and first fruits of your increase, NIV says your barns will be filled to overflowing. Mm. NES says your vats will overflow with new wine. Overflowing. How many like overflowing? Overflowing. Overflowing. Now in Joshua 19, you see an example of what the Lord spoke to Brother Copeland. In Joshua 19, 9, 19.9, it says, Out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon. For the part of the children of Judah was what? Was what? Anybody reading the Bible? Yes. The part of the children of Judah was too much, too much, too much for them. Too much for them. Therefore, the children of Simeon, who was their brothers, a whole other tribe of people, they had their inheritance within the inheritance of them. Simeon didn't have to fight and take their land. Judah just gave it to them. And why did they have it to give? Because <laughs> they took too much. If you back up and read the previous chapters, 
you'll see that different ones came and complained about not having enough. And Joshua, the Lord through Joshua said, well, basically don't complain to me. Go get it. What are you waiting on? <laughs> Go get it. Well, Judah acted on it. They suited up and they went and took it. And they took it to the north and they took it to the east and they took it to the south and they sent it back home and said, we got it. Is there any more out there? Yeah, take it, take it. So they took it. They took it in the, in the, in the southwest and they took it in the west and they took it in the northwest. They said, we took, we took that too. Is there any more? Yeah, take it, take it. So they took it. They just took it and kept on taking it. Now many today would have called them greedy. Materialistic. Why do you take more? You don't need that. You don't need all that. What do you need with all that? What do you need with all? What do they need with all that? What does a church need with all that? What does a preacher need with that? What do you, what do you need with all that? See, has the Spirit of God been leading us this way for years, whether we, really, we, we uh, realized it or not, we've been standing up saying what? I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm getting my buildings, my lands, plural, my houses, my vehicles. I'm getting them. I'm getting them. The Lord's bringing us into the best shape of our lives. Huh? We're getting free from obligations and, and debts. What does that do? That loosens up resources. For what? For what? What do y'all need with all that? <laughs> Some folks are with me. What, what do you need with all that? Couldn't if somebody looked at them and said, why did you take so much? How many acres did you take? You don't need all that. Shame on you. Other people, don't even, other people don't even have a place to live. And you took all of that? They're going, yeah, we did. <laughs> what do you need with all that? Oh, <laughs> I've heard this phrase directed at me, directed at the church. What do y'all need with all that? People say, well, you don't need a place that big. You don't need a place that nice. You could put that money somewhere else. You don't need this. You don't need that. You don't need the other. Hmm? Really? Everything we've done, it turned out the Lord had a purpose for it. He had a use for it. And if you heard me saying it was by the Spirit of the Lord more than I knew, uh, you think, well, what do I need with all that? And what, what do we say? Get it and find out. Right? When they got it, did they know it was going to be key to Simeon's future? No. They did not know that. What if they hadn't got it? What if they hadn't got it? The Spirit of God said to Brother Copeland that all these things coming into the kingdom are tied to people, believers, believing, sowing, and reaping beyond themselves. Can you see it? There's got to be a, a praising bunch, a Judah bunch. Come on, are you listening? There's got to be a wide-eyed, sword-toting, shield-holding, come on, praising a loud bunch that just won't quit, that would just won't quit, that just goes too far <laughs> and takes too much, just takes way, way, way more than any reasonable person would need. <laughs> Somebody's getting this. I'm getting it. How about you? I'm Hmm? There's got to be, now if you read that whole passage, you'll find that many of the tribes at that point did not have an inheritance yet. 
because they lacked the faith to take it. They were not waiting on God. When some of them complained, the Spirit of God said through Joshua, basically, what are you waiting on? What are you griping at me for? Go get it. And he said, well, yeah, but they have tanks. They got iron chariots and, and they're big. And, 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 and he said, you're a great people. Go get it. Do it. Judah got it. They said, we are a great people. God is with us. We're going to take our inheritance and we're not going to stop till we got it all. And they possessed and they received and they laid hold and they advanced and they believed and they reached and they got it. And they received and received and they went on and on and on. And when they got through, (laughs) they said, what are we going to do with all this? (laughs) Hasn't God done, begun, began to do some of these things for us? We got land behind us here. More than we need. To just have church services. We got resources. If it was just about us having a place to meet in, we don't need a word production center. We don't need all that. We're going we're to really believe for millions upon millions upon millions beyond what we need as a church? Huh? Huh? And just send it to people? And give it to them? Why, why couldn't Simeon take their land too? What's wrong with them? Put it back up, 19.9. Out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon. Did the children of Simeon, and this is a whole tribe, this is a lot of people. Men, women, children. Did they get their inheritance? Yes, they did. Not because they took it with their faith. They got it because Judah was gracious. And I, I don't even have to know them to know this. There probably were some complaining folks. folks. And, and I, don't, I don't doubt that they might have found fault with Judah in times past. But God is merciful, isn't he? And gracious. When you lack faith to rise and take what you should, there's reasons why. And there's other things connected to it. But, as we've already been talking about, in this lifetime, there's always going to be a lot of folks that just, they reject the message of faith. They reject the message of God being a good God and a generous God. They reject the thoughts of abundance. They don't want to hear it. So there must be a bunch. There's got to be a bunch that takes too much to help with mercy for those that don't take enough. Out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon. For the part of the children of Judah was too much for them. Wonder how that worked out. It happened. This is not a fairy tale. This happened. Wonder how it happened. Now let's go back to this. Very basic. It couldn't have happened unless and until they took too much. It never, I assure you, it never came up until after they had taken too much. But now that they got all this land, somehow or another they noticed their brother Simeon over there in the refugee camp. (laughs) Oh boy. I better not go there. Uh, But their their hearts went out to them. Right? And somebody brought it up to the, uh, some of the leadership or some of them got to talking or something and said, you know, 
Man, my heart goes out to the Simeonites. They're hurting. You know, they're God's people, aren't they? Yes. They're God's people. But for whatever reasons, they have not taken hold of their inheritance. They've not risen up and not had faith and not done what they could and should do. And so word was sent to Simeon's leadership. And they came over and met with Judah's leadership. How many of this is a happy day? This is for, for everybody, isn't it? They may, not, they may not even know why they're there. But the ones that were appointed to speak, they said, uh, Brothers, uh, we, we see that you haven't found your place. You haven't got your, your lands, your houses, and your buildings, and your vehicles yet. <laughs> Y'all with me or not? And uh, I don't know if you had heard, but we have recently come into a whole lot of <laughs> lands and buildings and houses and vehicles. We just, we just got vehicles coming out of our ears over here. We just got houses for days. And we just, we have it on our heart, if you think it's right. Would y'all like to move in over there? Hmm? On those uh, thousand acres over there? You know, I, we, we wouldn't even know you're there. <laughs> and uh, people say, y'all, y'all gonna, y'all gonna rent it to us? No. If you want it, if you think it's right, we're gonna deed it to you. It'll be yours and your children's forever. It's not going to cost you a dime. Whew. And just like that, just like that, Simeon and their generations to come have their lands, have their home places. Come on, are you listening? Tell me why they got it. Because of that wild eyed, loud music playing that that praising bunch, right? That Judah is known. They're the bunch that shouts hallelujah all the time. They're, they're the bunch that talks, you know, modern day equivalent, talking tongues. They're, they're the bunch, huh? Goes to conventions. And gets there early and stays late. And just goes on and on. And, and they're the bunch. They won't quit. The bunch that just keeps on keeping on and, and receives until it's just way, way more than enough. <laughs> Somebody say, that's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. The Lord hadn't been talking to us about this for weeks for no reason. This is us. Oh, somebody say, glory to God, glory to God. This is us. This is us. Hoo wee. Go to Third John, please. Third John. Then we go into Second Kings. Third John. Brother Copeland said that the Lord spoke to him that all these things in the kingdom must be brought into the kingdom by the faith of those who sow and reap beyond themselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. Sow and reap. Sow and reap. Beyond, themselves. beyond themselves. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You and I are so blessed. I said we are so blessed. Is it true that it's more blessed to give than to receive. How blessed was Judah on this occasion to just be able to give as a seed with no strings. <laughs> Family places and home places for a whole tribe of 
thousands of people that belongs to him for generations to come. Is God still that good today? Is, is he still doing things like that today? I want you to sit out loud with an additional light. Sit out loud. I'm getting, I'm getting my houses, my buildings, my lands, my vehicles. How much are you going to get? Too much houses, too much buildings, too much lands, too much vehicles. Too much for what? Too much for just me. Too much for just my family. Too much for just our church. Too much. Too much. Too much for just what we need and desire. And with the Lord abounding in his grace toward us, it enriches us until we are able to abound. We've been abounding as a church family. We've abounded to other churches. We've we've helped pay for their buildings and their projects and and we've sown to folks other sea overseas, right? And we've sown materials on a daily basis. We're we're sending them out, aren't we? And the Lord has dealt with us. All that is seed. You should receive all the harvest off of all that. Right? And receiving the full harvest off of all that seed sown, what will it do for us? What is it doing for us? It is bringing us to a whole nother level of ability. Abounding. Surplusage. Excess. Superabundant. If you think, well, okay. <laughs> You're excited. We can see that. Now, if you feel that way, you don't believe this. You just don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, you won't be bothered with it. It won't happen for you. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And you, you my bunch. You, you my bunch. Yes, sir. We're the Judah. Judah praising hallelujah bunch. Woo. We, we the whopper chunk seed sowing, aren't we? We are. It's us. It's us. Glory to God. The word says you will decree a thing and it'll be so unto you. I want you to decree so. I want you to mean it from the sole of your foot, from the tip of your toes. Say it out loud. I decree all my debts will be paid off. I decree abundance too much will come into my hands. And we will abound abound toward others. others. Hallelujah. 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 We've been believing some of these things around here for in the neighborhood of 10 years. And we found out recently God time, that's just, (laughs) just a few minutes. Just a few, that, that's, that's nothing God time. And uh, I can see it by faith. What, what we're doing over here in the Word Production Center, that's a step of faith. We began this and even at this point, we don't know how we're going to be able to do all these things. We don't have to know how. When we stepped out, To make the word supply available to everybody at no cost. I did not know how that would work. I spent a few nights with a calculator. And it did not compute. I finally just put it in the drawer and pushed the the door to it. 
and said, that, that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is did the Lord direct us to do this? Because if he did, but what it comes down to is you and I having the faith to believe for what other people won't believe for. And it's not just for us, it's for them. It's for them. It's for believers in Singapore. It's for believers in China. Come on, are you listening? It's people that haven't even become a believer yet. We're believing for them, aren't we? To get in their hands and in their eyes and in their ears what will feed their spirit and feed their faith and set them free from centuries of tradition and lies and junk and religion that's held them down. That they may know the truth and be free. Be free, be free, completely, totally free. Said out loud, it shall shall come to pass. pass. Hallelujah. You can be seated. <laughs> Woo, you can you can tell the Lord's in this, can't you? You can you can tell, you can tell, you can tell. He's already got us in this vein. And you can tell he's about to shift us into another gear. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Second John, they'll put it on the screen for us. Find Second Kings four at some point. Third, did I say Second John? I should have said Third John two. Third John two, very familiar verse of scripture. Do you know what it says? Beloved, I wish or I desire. Some say pray. Above all things. Now that's a strong statement, isn't it? Above all things. What's he desiring for them? That you may prosper and be in health. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't tell me John was one of those health and wealth preachers. Huh? John? The John? (laughs) <laughs> We're in good company then, huh? <laughs> that you may prosper and be in health, notice, even as your soul prospers. Now, uh, we, we read in our text earlier, uh, let a man give as he's purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver. This overflowing abundance. This surplus, this too much does not begin in your pocketbook or your accounts. Sometimes folks are, they're walking by sight and and, and they're waiting until they see more and and have more in their hand and they'll get excited. No, no. You're going to prosper externally and be in health externally. That's tied directly to how you're prospering internally. Right? And this superabounding spirit and, and, and mentality and, and faith, it doesn't start out here. It doesn't start in your pocketbook or your, your accounts. It starts in your heart. Amen. And seeds of this have been sown in many of us from years ago. But the Lord, the Spirit of God, is watering it Hallelujah. big time. In these days with us in this Abounding Ability series, he's pouring the water to this sea because it's time for it to come up (laughs) and produce fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. Glory to God. And it happens in here. Don't see it's unbelief to say, well, I don't see all that money. You you do see some things that have happened right here with us in just a few years. But that's walking beside. People who believe it don't have to see it. Before they believe it, they believe it before they see it. 
prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. In Ephesians 3.20, don't turn there, just upon the screen, the Amplified. Ephesians 3.20, the, the word is used here that we're studying on abounding. Ephesians 3.20, Amplified, says, Now to him who by the action of his power that's at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do what? <laughs> Super abundantly, far over and above. <laughs> is he over and above God? He, it's all through the scriptures. Far over and above all that we ask or think. That's a, a note there. Infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Keep going. Well, back up. I, the King James changes the structure. This far over and above is, is going to happen how? According to what? Tied to what? Tied to the power that's at work within us. Can you see this? It doesn't happen out here and then our heart gets stirred up. Something is working in us. Look at the King James. You might be more familiar with that. What does the King James say? He's able to do what? Exceeding. Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. It's going to be according to, tied to, joined to what? What's happening in us. The power that's working in us. And that power comes from His Word. The seed of His Word that He's put in us. Don't focus on the outside. Don't focus on what you don't have. Don't focus on how it's been the last two years. And it's easy to tell. You hear me talk about it all the time, but it's one of the easiest ways to tell. If you think ho-hum, I'm bored with it, I'm tired about it, that means you don't believe it. You don't have any dynamo working on the inside of you. And if you feel like you've got nothing to look forward to, you've got no reason to jump out of bed tomorrow, then you don't have that power working in you. But oh, it's faith and patience to just keep on believing and believing and believing. And no matter if it's been a few years, no matter if everything hadn't looked that way, you just jump out of bed again and say, it's happening. Watch out. It's happening. I'm going to have too much for me. Too much. He gave Abraham too many cows, didn't he? Isaac and Jacob, too many goats and camels, didn't he? He gave them too many fish, didn't he? Will he run your cup over? I'm going to have too much. Next time somebody says, man, you think we're going to have enough? You think, no. No, we're going to have too much. <laughs> too much for us. What is too much for you? What was too much for Judah? Too much for Judah was enough for Simeon. Yes. Wow. Too much for you is enough for somebody else. <laughs> See, people can ridicule us and, you know, y'all are just materialistic. You're just that. always claim you more than enough, too much. About. No, it's not just about us. It's not just about stockpiling stuff. I've got to have too much in order to have any substantial resources for anybody else. I can sacrifice and do without, but then it's, you know, it's not going to be much for them. If there to be anything appreciable for them, it's going to have to supersede. It's going to have to be in excess of what I need, my little stuff, our ministries and our churches. It is happening. Second Kings. I'm so convinced that it's happening. I'm so convinced of the truth of what I just waved my arms and shouted and preached about. That my next segment here has to do with you getting ready for it. Preparing for surplus. Faith gets ready. Doesn't it? Doesn't Hebrews 11 talk about Noah? What did Noah do? His faith was demonstrated in getting ready for what was, what did he get ready for? He got ready for too much water. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was way too much water. Overflowed everything. But he got ready for it. I said he got ready. <laughs> Woo. Second Kings 4, verse 1. I want to read the Good News translation. Good News translation, if we can find that one. Yeah. So the widow of a member of a group of prophets went to Elisha and said, Sir, my husband has died. As you know, he was a God-fearing man. But now a man he owed money to has come to take away my two sons as slaves in payment for my husband's debt. Do we want to be free from debt? Yes. Free from those vulnerabilities? Yes. Amen. Say it again. All my debts. All my debts. Every, one Every one of them. Is being reduced. Is being reduced. And eliminated. And eliminated. Yes. You don't have to know how. Yes. Just expect it to happen. Hallelujah. Expect it to happen. Hallelujah. How could you tell if you were really, really expecting it? Does it make you happy yes. to pay it off yes. or not? Yes. Then if you're really expecting it to be paid off and soon, that makes you glad. It makes you glad. You're looking forward to it. And it could happen tonight. It could happen tonight. Oh, did I lose somebody? Did I lose somebody? <laughs> it could happen tomorrow afternoon. Couldn't it? could happen July the 4th. <laughs> you don't have to know how, just expect. Anyway, she's, she and her family is in a bad way. Uh, in those days, if you couldn't pay your debts, you didn't just file bankruptcy. They'd come take everything you had, house, land, and they'd take your kids and sell them for slaves and put the money on the debt. Sell you. This is what she's facing. She's in a bad way. Husband, husband their, their daddy and her husband is gone. So they're dealing with that. And now they don't know, you know, any, any time now these guys are going to come knock on the door and take her sons away. In all likelihood, never see them again. Knowing they're not having a good life for somebody's property. Does she need a miracle? Yes. Does she need it right now? Yes. And so she comes to God. In those days, they didn't know they could come, they, they didn't have the uh, ability to come to God directly for themselves. She went to the man of God. And in verse 2, he said, What shall I do for you? Now, this is very important. What, what does the King James say? What shall I do for you? You can tell this is, a, this is a reflective question. Uh, does he immediately take responsibility to pay her bills? No, he does not. And yet he may have some resources. He likely did. Should he have immediately taken responsibility to pay her bills? No. I said no. Do not let anyone make you their source. Y'all with me, friends? Don't let anybody. That includes family members. That includes grown sisters and brothers and in-laws and cousins and and friends, and fellow employees, and fellow students. Yes, sir. Just because you have it and they don't does not mean you're supposed to give it to them. And it doesn't mean you're supposed to be, feel bad or guilty if you don't. Are y'all with me now? There's a lot of people are they're confused about these things and they're 
doing some things they ought not do. And they're letting people pressure them when they ought not let them pressure them. Uh, hold your place here. Go to John, second chapter. I'll let you shout some more here in just a minute, but <laughs> you need to get this. This will keep you from being pressured and not knowing what to do in some situations in time to come. See, there's, there's all kind of people in churches, non-believers as well. They will do everything in their power to make you feel guilty, ashamed, if you have something and somebody does not and you don't take care of them with it. Somebody said, well, you're supposed to. Said who? How many are you supposed to take care of? You can impoverish yourself before the week's out. You can sell everything you got and give it to people. And worldwide, it's, it's not going to be a drop in the bucket. And then now you need help. So what are you supposed to do? Well, you're not supposed to just do nothing. But you're not supposed to let people look to you as their source and pressure you and try to make you feel obligated or guilty or ashamed if you don't. You know why? Because we all have the same source. Do we or not? We all have the same source. <laughs> John 2, the first miracle that occurred in Jesus' ministry is, the, is at the wedding feast here of Cana. And uh, in verse 3, John 2, 3, when they wanted wine, they ran out of wine. The mother of Jesus said to them, they have no wine. Why don't you say that to him? Huh? <laughs> well, obviously this is an uncomfortable situation. They're, they're out of supplies, and it's going to make the host look bad. And it's going to tarnish the, the bride and groom's big day. And it's just, it's uncomfortable, it's awkward. She felt bad for them. And what does he say, verse 4? I'll take care of it right away. <laughs> huh? Never fear. I'm here. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll take care of it. No. No. He, Jesus was not led by needs. He was not led by somebody pulling on him. You know what he responded to? Faith. Faith. What did he say? Woman, what have I to do with you? In other words, uh, literally that means, he, he said, what to me and to you? What is that to me and to you? Who said this? <laughs> what did Jesus say? <laughs> what is that to me and to you? I want you to try that out. Remember, you're quoting Jesus. <laughs> Said out loud, what is that, what is that to me? me. <laughs> Who said it? Jesus. Jesus. Did you know there's a whole lot of things in this life? There's nothing to you. Your, your little shoulders are not big enough. To shoulder the cares and concerns and needs of humanity. You need to admit right now, you cannot possibly ever meet everybody's needs around you. And to try to is to prepare for failure and disaster. Say it out loud, I am not their source. Not, their source. not now. Not, now. not tomorrow. So what do you do then? 
If the Lord deals with you to do something in a situation, it's because somebody somewhere is believing and praying, right? right? And in faith. And so in this case, He is ministering to them through you. You're not meeting their need. But just because, and you see people, I've, I've seen folks, just they let their, their family members, they let their kids, they let their grandkids just impoverish them because they will just do stupid stuff and, and not think twice about it because they know mama will bail them out. They know daddy will, they know, that, and then they'll come and give a sad story and get mad if they don't cough up the money right now. And you're a fool if you do. You're not being led. You're letting the enemy rob you. What do I do? You seek the Lord. You seek your Lord. You ask him what you should do. Come on, are you listening? And, I, and if he doesn't deal with you to do it, don't you let any amount of their crying and pulling and sob stories move you. I didn't say it was easy. But you can actually be contributing to people's sin and financing ungodly lifestyles and perpetuating problems because the Lord would let them get hungry until they turned to Him and changed. But you keep getting in the way and interfering with things. Say it out loud, I am not their source. Who, who is their source? God. They have the same source. I do. Right? If they would look to Him and believe Him, would He help them? Yes. yes. Now back to 2 Kings. This woman is looking to Him. And she's not, I don't believe she's just expecting the prophet to pull money out of his pocket. Although I believe if the Lord told him to, he would. And you want to be open to this. And there will be times the Lord will direct you to. But what did he say? 2 Kings 4. <laughs> Some folks are still trying to think if they like that or not. Well, don't take my word for it. Search the scriptures out. See what it says. You know how you can tell it's wrong? Pressure. Pressure. People putting pressure on you. Looking at you, pulling on you. That means they're not looking to him. They're looking to you. And that's not okay. I said that's not okay. Because you can't be their source. Even if you can do something about what's going on right then, something can happen tomorrow that you can't do anything about. Then what are they going to do? He said, what shall I do for you? And then what he says? Tell me, what do you have at home? She asked her what she has. And we're not going to take her up an offering? No. We're not going to give her money? No. The word of the Lord is, what do you have at the house? What do you have in your possession, in your hands? She said, I don't have anything except a small jar of oil. Verse 3, he said, he's got the word of the Lord. He's got the answer. He says, here's what you do. You go and get you some jars, empty jars. And the uh, original talks about not just a few. What, what does not a few mean? What, what is not a few? What's a lot? Many. And verse 4, then you get all your pots, you and your sons go to the house, close the door, and then pour out the oil into the jars. Why would you do that? This sounds similar to what Jesus did at the wedding feast of, Can wedding feast of Canaan. What did he tell them? 
go fill the water pots with water. What would be the first question to come to your mind? Why? <laughs> right? Why? <laughs> we don't need water. We got guests here. We got things to do. And I'm understanding you didn't just turn on the faucet and drop the hose in the big pots. You got to go to the well. You got to draw it up. You got to haul the little bucket over. You got to pour it. It takes a while. You're going to get hot. You're going to get sweaty. And all the time, meanwhile, things, you're not taking care of things at the party. It would have been so easy to say, why? I ain't got time to do that. And what would they have missed? They would have missed a miracle, wouldn't they? We're talking about preparing for surplus and excess, aren't we? Last uh, week, or the last time I, I taught on this, I should say, we talked about qualifying for surplus. And if you weren't here, let me, let me strongly recommend and, and to, to, uh, to the, all the church, the church in uh, Sarasota, that teaching is a very key teaching for us right now. Yes. The faithfulness that we talked about. And defined in that. If you weren't here, if you didn't see it, please get it, download it, watch it, listen to it. It's a key part of this. And uh, what she did is what we talked about in that she just faithfully complied. Faithful means you do it the way you were told. You do what you were told the way you were told. What was she told? Go get pots. Go get lots of pots, right? Go to the house, you and your boys and your pots. Shut the door. Pour out of the little pot into the big pot. This is strange. Hmm? This is how you get miracles. I said, this is how you get miracles. And what'd she do? The woman went in the house with her sons. She closed the door. Everybody say, faithful. Does she qualify for surplus? She's doing what she was told, the way she was told, right? She didn't get another location. She didn't do it by herself. She didn't do it publicly. She didn't change the receptacles. She got what he told her, the way he told her, where he told her, with whom he told her. Come on. Somebody say faithful, faithful, faithful. And she began to pour it out, and her sons brought her. And, and what was amazing is that the little pot filled up the big pot and just kept on flowing. Somebody said, kept on flowing, kept on flowing. And she said, okay, slide me another pot into here. So slid the pot. She just kept on pouring. She might not have wanted to change her position or anything because <laughs> these are like dollar bills falling out of here. This is money. Do they need money? Yes. Desperately need money. And here's money, here's money. And she thought, ooh, 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 slide a pot, slide a pot. So she slid another pot. Ooh, here's a pot, here's a pot, here's a pot. All right, that's got to be, e, 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 that must be $3,000 right there. Come on, come on, pot. Come on, slide the pot, slide. And they did this, I don't know how long, but until finally she said, okay, boy, give me another pot. He said, Mama, that's all the pot. She said, don't play with me. Put a pot up under here. <laughs> And uh, what, what do you think she was thinking at that moment? Oh, <laughs> she had got more pots. <laughs> when the Lord says, don't get just a few. Yes. Hmm? You know what you need to do? You need to put ads in the paper. <laughs> you need to go house to house, right? Until the Lord says, okay, okay, that's enough pots. That's enough pots. <laughs> and, uh, and the oil stopped flowing. There's a message here too. It stopped when there was nothing else to receive it. I guess it would have continued flowing as long as there was something to receive it. Well, there's a message there. Isn't there? And verse 7, she sent word back to Elijah, Elisha the prophet, and he said, sell that oil, pay off your debts. What does that mean? No creditors coming to get you boys. Huh? Your debts are paid off. Nobody's going to kick you out of your house. Nobody's going to come get your kids. Come on, are you listening? Is this a glorious miracle? Is this wonderful? 
And that's what they needed. That's what she asked for. But was that all she got? No. I said, was that all she got? Did she get anything else yes. beyond her debts paid? What did he say? He said, sell it, pay off all your debts, and, 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 and there will be enough money left over for you and your sons to live on. To live on. Live on. These guys are set. Was she in a mess financially? Were her and her kids in how quickly they went from terrible debt and problems and losing everything to every debt paid off and plenty to live on. Is God still God? Is he, is he still this way today? Has he changed? Is this still his will? God has done miracles like this over and over again. The key is what Jesus' mother told him. Hmm? She said, whatever he says to you, do it. And they did. And they got the miracle. This happened again and again. When they needed tax money, what did Jesus say? Just go right over there. Throw a line in. First fish. You pull up. Look in his mouth. <laughs> huh? What did he say? Get through, get through preaching and said, uh, cast your net over there. Launch out into the deep. Cast your net over there. And what happened? Overflow. Somebody say overflow. As a result of doing what? They got 5,000 men plus women plus children out on the hillside. Hadn't eaten for a long time. Right? And uh, Jesus said, what do you got? Does that sound familiar? What do you, what do you have? Well, just, just these five little loaves and, and fish. It's a little boy's lunch. So it's probably half a pound, pound. I mean, it's a little boy. It's his lunch. And he's, Jesus smiled and go, that's it, give it to me. Held it up, blessed it, break it. Handed, are they doing what he told them to do? Yes. The way, you see, very specific. Sit down in companies of 50s. Very specific. Why are we talking about this? I believe the Spirit of God is talking about this. And I believe he's telling us and about to tell us some very specific things to do. Hmm? In preparation for surplus. And there's some things that can happen so quick. Pay off all your debts. And, 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 uh, y'all not excited enough about this. I got to, I got to preach this a little better. Uh, is he still the same God? Has he changed? Are you open for the Lord to tell you, go do this? Huh? And then do this and do it this way. Hmm? Now here's the big question. Will you be faithful? Will you do what he told you? The way he told you. They broke. They ate. If you add up, if that little boy's lunch was a half pound or a pound, and there's 5,000 plus women, plus children, plus everybody else, uh, that's probably a 30,000 times harvest. 30,000 fold. Right there that afternoon. And did he have just enough for everybody to get fed? And, and get, no, 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 no. They had 12 baskets left over. Which if you, if you figure it up, it's like, and, and, and you know, uh, some believe, and it very well could be, that the little boy wound up with the leftovers. I don't know, but it was his seed. But if you figure it up, it's about a thousand fold return. On his little seed that he brought. Can God still do things like this? Can he, can he, if those that will listen to him, those that will obey him, get your eyes off of people. 
as you say, well, they need to do this for me, or I want this, or why won't they? Do? Get your eyes off of family members. Get your eyes off the government. Come on, are you listening? Get your eyes off of everybody else. Nobody is your source except the source. Yeah, but I'm in a mess. I'm hurting. She was in a mess. She's hurting. And what did they say? What did he say to her? What do you have? And then he told her something very specific to do with it. And it was the key to a flow that just kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. And in one afternoon, one afternoon, all her debts paid off and plenty for her and her boys to live on. I believe it happened just like that. I believe God, the same God's alive today. He hasn't changed. He loves me and you just like he loves her, right? And he'll do the same kind of thing. Stand on your feet, everybody. Let's lift our heart. Let's lift our voice. Let's lift our minds toward him about this. Oh, bless you, Lord. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Just close your eyes. Pray out loud if this is your heart and your desire. Father God, I receive your word about these things into my heart. I believe it and I receive it. And I say it is at work in me. It is powerful inside me. My soul, my inner man is prospering because of these words. Your words. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Say it out loud, whatever you say to me, whatever you show me to do, I will do. By your grace, by your help, and I am fully confident that you are working right now, and it will come to pass that all debts, all obligations, Met, Met. paid for, paid off, off. it will be, be. and And we'll have more, more. and plenty, and And too much much. to abound to others. others. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 